Getting a mammogram at age 40 may not be enough in the battle against breast cancer. The American College of Radiology now recommends that women receive a breast cancer screening at age 30. So what do you need to know? Here with some answers, family physician, Dr. Jen Cottle. Thank you for joining us this morning, doctor. We appreciate it. So I saw this news come out earlier this week and we wanted to talk about it because I feel like a lot of people need to really be aware of this. So why did the age change? Okay, so really what we're talking about is not necessarily getting mammograms at the age of 30, but being evaluated for risk factors by the age of 30. And this is a new recommendation by the American College of Radiology and the Society of Breast Imaging. They've come out and said that, look, we need to evaluate women by the age of 30, see what risk factors they have, to then determine if they need um, breast uh, cancer screening before the age of 40. So that's really what we're looking at. But the other thing that these guidelines noted is that African American American women should be considered a high-risk subgroup because uh, African American women, even though we have the same incidence and occurrence of breast cancer as white women, black women tend to uh, have more severe cases and die more from it. So that's another finding that these guidelines had. So, doctor, for those of us who I'm 35, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I have not really thought much about this yet because I always thought that I was going to wait until 40. So, what type of signs, symptoms, mm -hmm. what should we be talking about, looking for, what should we be asking our doctor? So I think the, the take-home points, really, and I think a lot of women, and myself included, sometimes it gets very confusing with all the guidelines. It seems like things change all the time. But I don't want women at home to get confused. The bottom line is you need to understand what your risk factors are. And you may not know what those are, but that's why we have to go in and talk to our doctor. If you've had a personal history of, of a breast cancer, you have a family history of breast cancer, maybe you've had radiation or you have dense breasts or certain genetic factors, that may make you at high risk. But this is why, even if you don't know, talk with your doctor early so that we can help you determine it and then okay. figure out if you need earlier screening. That's okay. the key here. Okay, very good advice. Thank you. Now, what about this, this weed killer that is in tons of food here in the United States? What is this? So glyphosate is, is kind of what we're talking about. This is actually a chemical that we see in a lot of uh, sort of herbicides that are actually used throughout the entire world. And as I was reading up about this, I, it was actually really interesting to find out how commonly used this substance is. You know, one thing in my reading that I found out is that, you know, there are a lot of conflicting reports about um, the safety and, and how this substance affects people and may affect people down the line. You know, there have been a lot of studies done by independent groups, so academicians. Um, other industries, and there are some conflicting reports. But this is what I would say. Um What's really important is that we have good research about this chemical. We understand how it affects our body. But the other thing we need to be paying attention to is adjuvants, the other chemicals used along with it, because those may pose risks as well. So we need a lot of information. That's really what we need. All right. Thank you very much. And it's in foods like crackers, granola, honey, oatmeal, baby food, corn. There's a long list. Thank you, doctor, for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Rob. Thank you.